Oh, this is a dead end, it looks like. I there's no bottles here, but I guess they would have collected all the ones that they used up. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. 4, 18, 21, 4, 1. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. His boyfriend is on his way home. He brings tins of meat and vegetables with him. Their pockets are heavier with money, but only slightly. What about the bus stop? Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one bump on the road. Oh no. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dead dog? Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast yeah. RCM vehicle oh. hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. Oh, that's enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Oh, so cool. Of course we can't go over there. Uh, yeah, let's check this out. black swallow circles above you. You hear it chirp. Can't get up there. Huh. How do I... Because I can't get up there either, but I definitely can because there's some change. I have to go around this side. There's it. Where am I right now if I'm looking at this? We haven't seen this yet, so I guess we're like in this area. Ooh. No boat in the boathouse today. Double fair visual calculus. Oversized superstar sunglasses. What the fuck? Why am I wearing this? Oh yeah, I decided to change to the Jamrock Biker Cop sunnies. I remember now. 
Is your own stardom too dazzling for your eyes? Can't bear to look at your own fabulous reflection in the mirror? Then these classic oversized sunglasses are for you. Damn right they are. Uh, the black jeans? I think not. No boat in the boathouse? The boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. So it looks like we only had the outside to click on and then by selecting that and looking at it, it, it showed us this to select. It's like, it's almost like we're searching at first and then we see other things that we can dig further into. Can't go over there. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of the shaded bench covered in rust. Scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Hmm. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez sense. Grim affairs. Huh. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. So we got a bonus from bullet holes in the plaza, bullet holes in the backyard. Visual calculus. Yeah, those are not helping. Okay. I think I had gla the Is it these glasses? No. Those ones. I don't have any minuses. It's all the um Police stuff, it seems. Except for that. Okay. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Why this many bullet holes? Unable to piece Damn together it. the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. I'm dumb. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant smiling mouth, smiling its deadly smile, laughing at you and the world and the living. Ugh. Done for ch I'm done for changing my clothes, thinking it would make a difference. I guess what I was wearing. Science says entrée interdite. No ticket, take her booth, no longer in operation. Nice. That sound is so satisfying. The door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Ooh. Fall. Pippo. Pip. Wait. Is this the hat? The small wire framing inside this futuristic looking fallen Pippo hat gives it the aerodynamic shape of a swoop skier's helmet, but none of its protective qualities covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows to bring down the drag coefficient. 
Hmm. I still haven't found a better hat to wear. I mean, this is really good for the stats. Is that the fallen, headless fallen guy's hat? I think that's all for this area. People paid money to park here. No one would pay now. Huh. I'm trying to see. Which building that is. Fisherman shacks. Okay. So we're probably like. Yeah. That, oh, that's what these are. These are supposed to be the shacks. Oh, wait. Tiny cages carefully constructed. Sir, man? Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gym. It's him, Morel! There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Hmm, Gary. It's an interesting uh, background. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Yeah, that was uh, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. The whole the whole story. Oh, good. <laughs> We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. Crypto fascist. Okay. See, Lena. Tell her I won't be long. This is a man possessed, always on the brink of some breakthrough. He won't leave if there's a sliver of hope. The great find might happen today. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. He refastens a bit of netting that he that has come loose in the wind. Tell me about this phasmid you're looking for. Which is why we've been knee deep in the reeds laying traps for it. Uh no? You actually said, hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find. <laughs> <laughs> then you said, which is why we've been knee deep in the reeds laying chats for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? How would this catch it? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators. All scientists in our present case. What sort of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolved, without studying a live specimen. Yes. It makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. 
Sauron. At least the conclusion up to you. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long. He shakes his head. Would be glory itself. What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one? Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. Holds up an index finger. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. The cryptozoologist says brusquely enough that even he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. What would it be like to grasp and hold on to something you think is next to you or just behind you? like a trace of vapor you exhaled one spring morning as a child. This is what he's searching for, a specter. Uh, let us add there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades, admittedly. It's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe the Insulindian phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um... Parthenogenesis. Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. This arouses no special feelings in me. That's pretty clever. Yes. The Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed the traps? Yes. Says with some pride. More than some. He admires this about her. How do the traps work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. What will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Let me ask you about something else. Yes. What? Uh, how did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. So we've got, you're living your childhood dream out here. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Have you ever discovered a cryptid? 
I, if mm, so, you're living your childhood dream out here. It's not child's play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Size narrow. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. Honestly, being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Uh. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. And is anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. What kinds of evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the phasmid. I'll keep a very open mind. We should tell about our experience with the cold de Mamadakwa. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough. Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration. Not real research. And certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot. And both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. So, you've never discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. And not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So how many cryptids have been found? Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long. Wow. About 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Only two have proven to be real? Yes. The Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves. More so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Uh, not approved. I, I like this. I mean, I don't believe in the imaginary stuff, but, you know. This guy's making a living. He's doing his thing. He's happy about it. I'm not approvingly. Then the Insulindian Vasmid will be the third. Indeed. He just if thought, our expedition oh. is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. He does not smile, just looks you in the eye. It's a forceful gaze. Thanks for explaining that. Now, about something else. Yes? Uh, let's talk about specific cryptids. Alright. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what- I'm a specialist, okay. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. You need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena, or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. Uh, which cryptid did you almost catch? You said before that you almost caught one. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. All right, I'll be the judge of what's dull or not. Willow people? Not at all. Uh, what are willow people? They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. He says it in a self-explanatory, everyday manner. Like a, like a tree ant? They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, 
They're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. Wait, so I may have seen these willow people without knowing it? You probably have. How did you almost catch a willow person? Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. Oh man. It was a bright lavender color. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. That is a wild way to, to find it. I love it. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. And then? I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. He smirks. I oh, know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone and to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. You're not going to convince Kim that what you're doing is a real thing, Morel. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. One might say you're barking up the wrong tree. Uh, I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. Living? No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. Get out of here. No, we will not get out of anywhere. <laughs> the Dread Moose is a widely reported cryptid from Arda. It subsists entirely on flesh and has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Hold on, does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Okay, what does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary ardent moose. Then how can you tell if it's the ordinary or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful and hard to identify. I am 100% behind the dread moose. I utterly, utterly believe it exists. Of course you do. <laughs> the bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. Sightings in Vasa reaching back four centuries. But, of course, nothing satiates the skepticism of... A detective. Pardon me, I did not wish to seek conflict. It's simply my training to question things. Understood, Lieutenant. Man tips his hat slightly and then looks to you. In fact, he, Morel should be encouraging skepticism, right? That's that's part of that's part of the scientific process. People question your theories, and then you you try to to back up back them up with evidence, right? I know the biggest cryptid, the giant of Kokonur. That's impressive, I guess. But have you seen it with your own eyes? Have you seen it? I haven't had a chance to travel to Coco Nor. No. And I likely never will. The Samuskil Desert region has been embroiled in a small civil war for the last eight years. Was this the one that was the size of a mountain? I fear this mindless barbarism may have wiped out the elusive creature entirely. Sightings of towering luminosities have grown rare recently. While they once used to be constant. It remains unclear what this has got to do with you seeing it. As he was inquiring before, he was just being defensive. I know about Cryobacter catlensis. Oh, everyone knows about that one. Thanks to Professor Mijanu being the talk of the town for a time. Coughs in his fist. A bit of jealousy there. He'd want that glory, truth be told. Even if he'd have to inject himself with bacteria to get it. Jeez. Although, probably because her life ended as a result of her working gutler, no one remembers her contributions to the search for the Nongok. The Nongok? A flightless cursor owl 
found in the Seminine Isles. Its long legs permit the Nongok to run faster than any other avian. Perhaps any other animal. Who knows? When it's not hunting its prey in this manner, the Ock hangs from tree branches, like a bat, waiting to dive on hapless prey below on the jungle floor. Mijanu liked extreme animals, you see. One of the few figures of the academic establishment I respect. Really a shame she disappeared. When did she disappear? Oh, decades ago. In the 30s. I didn't know her personally, of course. A chasm of academic pretension still stood before us. Even though she had unusual courage for someone from the other side. Just, what? We can't talk about the cola de Madakwa? Just tell me about a cool cryptid. Any cryptid. No offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Oh, we did. Don't worry. We did. Me? I'm not a people person. Unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. He brushes an errant strand of hair from his eye. Enough tales then, let's change the subject. By all means. Uh, Lena seems... <laughs> uh, Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. Fair. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south, where Lena, Lena would be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. Really? She sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. Aww. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> Cost then continues. Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Damn right. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Jeez, he's another cough into his fist this time. Maybe you could go back to the whirling, warm up, come back to check the traps later. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Looks at you with obvious surprise. Uh, cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Chaos is my method. I I am its Zion. I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Caught the bug, I see. It's easier to get caught up in the search than you'd imagine. Uh, where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End. To the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower. After the church. The third is set near the canal. Where you crossed. By a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope. And among them... Uh, he gestures to the trap in front of them. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one. Since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality. But still... Better safe and stupid than sorry. What do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the fire. Uh, but he's lying about this even to himself. What if I encountered the phasmid in the wild? 
That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Okay. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Lay it on me thick. I got a level for that. He douses you with the odd smelling spray. A double helping as you present your other armpit. And then gives you a satisfied nod. I hope you're not buying this. It dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Yeah, I hope he's not going into debt doing this. He looks at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts the spray back in his pocket. I'm ready, let's get to it. Right, which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally, someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. I'll get going.